have some Kingway straight edges to machine. Three of those smaller and uh, then the longer one. Um, the smaller is a dual dovetail design, while the longer ones are flat ended here. So my test effort here first is to machine the, the longest one. The shorter ones are no problem, the, the, the travel of the table is long enough, but for this one it is not. I'm not certain, I'm trying to look on, let say Keith or Rucker's videos and all, to see how others have done it, but anyway, for such a relatively small machine as this one, I have to find out how to do because it's 60 centimeters long and my travel is only 40. So I have two options. First of all, I, I think I'll do this, this which is not really of any importance first. So um, then I have wedged the straight edge in a dovetail or in a, in a slot, I mean, blocked it off with, uh, with woods actually. I think uh, that should be good enough and just two clamps down and then I can move the whole assembly sideways if I want to which should be quite accurate uh, I could also swivel the head around so that for instance if I am now at the end of the travel there let's say like this so I have positioned my cutter here I could on the other side, when the travel uh, table is, is reached, I could just swap the head around to this side and then around like that. So I again I gain the needed um, 20 centimeters or so. We'll see. But this shall be scraped anyhow, so it, and as I said, this actually this flat is not that important, but it shall be scraped anyhow, so um, hoping that this should be sturdy enough and give the level of flatness as a preparation for scraping. So here I am uh, milling along. Uh, I've taken um, 1.5 millimeter down so it uh, cleans up well. I'm running uh, the cutter on the, in back gear at um, lower speed and uh, have a higher feed rate and the depth of cut is um, actually half a millimeter. I'm using auto feed so I'll just switch it on again. So I'm fairly pleased, uh, so I just have traversed and gotten the last 20 centimeters or so, 15 it was, on each side, uh, just moving the workpiece in the slots, and still I am measured and I get only a few hundreds deviation, which is scrapable, so to speak. And the finish is okay for scraping, so uh, all in all, quite good. And this is of course a non-critical surface, but uh, anyway, I think that method uh, proved okay. I now scraped the back, rear side also, and as you can see, or probably if you see, watch closely, or <laughs> look closely, I have blue here all over now, but not in the middle here. So that means it was actually bowed a little bit and I reckon that's because I clamped it down here and that it's not entirely straight here so that because of clamping pressures uneven 
I got it a little bit past. So even though I measured it correctly, when to be flat within uh, easily within the one hundredth of a millimeter all over, when tucked down, it sprung up again on me when uh, released. So of course, I measured it on the surface plate with the feeder gauges underneath to be around four hundredths of a millimeter which I corrected easily by scraping. So mounted again but now on the newly scraped and flat surface against another surface I've noticed flat and to the table and the clamps here so I hope this will hold it <coughs> against the force here and down and uh, I will then for this time around flip the head around and start on the outer here and then flip the head around again and continue So this will be my setup for milling the, the flat side here and of course I will use this here, just flip this around. Being able to swing the head around now, we gain the extra distance I need here on the ends. And just swing the end, the head around like that. Move it up. And then I'm able to get to the very end here. So that's a big advantage. Then I reach the top, but I still can manage, I think. Let's see. Yes, I'm over the top there. Great. One thing I try to do when I start scraping is um, to rough scrape it so I get down below the machining marks. So uh, I have now just for example used the very simple hand scraper I made. I use this tap and go method so it shall produce no burrs. So we see the amount of swarf produced and uh, still some marks left, may be able to do without that, and then, uh, but most of them are gone. You can measure how deep they are to determine whether or not you shall 
just carry on blind scraping but I will glue it up now and sure enough only some bluing here and over here so um, I have to swap sides also somewhat better and over here it is a bit tricky but functions to also then use the body push style here and uh, try to take where it's blue but still this is rough uh, cutting so don't mind I know I this is the lowest anyway not much left here now so soon um, I'll switch technique and I'll switch to uh, another technique so play this is hand scraped As you may see. So there we are.